Hello guys and guys, and welcome back to another episode of Tutorial Tuesday. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how you can take a Cinema 4D project, um, such as a Minecraft render or your uh, animated logo, and you can go ahead and put that in After Effects to use with the intro or any other project of your needs. So pretty much, I want to start off the uh, tutorial by going into Cinema 4D and showing you um, what I got set up here. So basically, you're going to need a project that you're going to want to take into After Effects. I'm not going to show how to make this project because if you looked up this tutorial, you're just going to want to learn how to put it into After Effects, um, animating and rigging and all that is a whole separate deal. Um, but right now I've just pulled up the file of um, the, the uh, character for the intro I made for Minecraft Universe. Um, pretty much it just involved him uh, jetpacking off into the distance and then going across the screen uh, where he'll make impact with the earth um, and then he's gonna pop up and uh, come up front and center and then go off screen where it'll show the logo next. Um, so pretty much that's the big dealio with that. Um, yet again I'm not gonna show all the animating and stuff because that's not that goes way beyond the capabilities of this tutorial but um, I do want to show how you can take this and put it into After Effects where you can composite it onto a scene like you see with the intro I did for Minecraft Universe, I put him in space and did a whole bunch of cool things with his character and added a lot of effects to him, made him glow, all that um, fun stuff. And a lot of that you cannot do in Cinema 4D, so it's really important that you can put it into After Effects to be able to do all that work. So pretty much there is two ways to go about this, uh, one of which is very, very, very easy, and uh, the second of which is a little bit um, harder, but um, it works for older versions of After Effects and it actually increases your render times by a little bit in After Effects, that is. Um, so pretty much, if you have um, After Effects, I think it is CC or CC 2014, you can actually import the straight uh, .c4d uh, Cinema 4D file into After Effects without having to render it here in Cinema 4D before importing it as an image sequence. So pretty much what that means is you can go ahead, you can go ahead into After Effects, you can create a new composition, um, not like that, I go ahead and create a new composition, call it, um, I always call mine main comp, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and make that 1920 by 1080, rock aspect ratio, why not, I'm going to go 60 frames per second just because, and I'm going to go ahead and make it like 10 seconds. Alright, so with that out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and make my composition here, and what you can actually do is, uh, let me minimize this, and uh, shrink this down so we can see my desktop. No, I'm having difficulties. There we go. Um, so pretty much what you can do is just grab your Cinema 4D file and put it into your project bin and now pretty much you can just drag it in and use it like any other footage and After Effects but um, you'll notice that you see these uh, grid lines. These actually come from the grid lines that are present in Cinema 4D. Um, if you want to get rid of those, you're going to have to go up here and go to software and click that and you're going to want to select uh, standard draft while you're editing. And then right before you um, right before you render, you're going to uh, notice how um, it is a little bit pixelated just because it's draft quality. Um, but when you're about to render, you're going to want to go up here and go to standard final. And it takes a little bit longer to render, that's why we wait until before we're about to export to do it and you'll see it, it applies anti-aliasing and a whole bunch of other good good stuff but um there you go you don't have to render it in cinema 4d at all it is definitely um a faster way to go through your workflow you do not have to sit there and wait to render um and inhibit your creative processes while you are making your intro and good stuff like that so that's all great but um, if you have an older version of After Effects, you're going to want to render out as an image sequence. So I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So I'm going to delete these because you will not be able to import C4D files into, um, I think, CS6 and below After Effects versions. Um, so let's go over to Cinema 4D yet again. And uh, here's our project that I was just talking about. Basically, what you want to do is go ahead and click up here to your render settings. And you're going to want to start out by going to output. You're going to want to make sure your width and height is um, as you desire it. Um, that is per project, so that I'm not going to be able to tell you a value that you want there. These are, depending on what your animation is, you can decide what your height and width is. And uh, you're going to want to render all frames. And you'll, you'll be able to select your range of frames down here. And you're going to want to go to save. 
you're going to want to find your save location. This is the save location for me. It's just a really long path and that's where it'll save to. Just click this right here and select the place to save to. Make sure you save in a folder of itself because it's going to spit out hundreds and hundreds of um, image files to the location that you specify. So you don't want to select your desktop because it's just going to clutter your desktop with hundreds of images. Um, of course, depending on how long your animation is, but it will spit out a ton of images because it's making an image sequence. Um, so format, you're going to want to be PNG, very important to select PNG. You're going to go to 8-bit channel for your depth and name. That is just whatever. You can select whatever you please. Um, alpha channel needs to be checked. That is very important. You can do straight alpha. No, actually leave those two unchecked. Straight alpha and separate alpha, leave those two unchecked. 8-bit dithering, uh, dithering, that's up to you. Include sound, that is up to you. Right now I don't have any sound in this project because um, I do all that in After Effects, so totally up to you. Um, Multi-pass, um, that is up to you. Anti-aliasing, that's up to you, but I recommend best at min level 2x2 and max level 4x4 for final renders. Um, yet again, up to you. It, it just makes the edges look smooth instead of jagged. Like, the edges of your character might look jagged, so that's a good way to fix it. Options, you're going to go down to where it says transparency. You're going to want to make sure that's checked. And all of this is pretty much up to you as well. Um, you can just leave them at default if you have no idea what these do. So pretty much that's that. Now, uh, you're going to want to make sure your save location is correct and it's in a folder of its own, not your desktop, <laughs> where it's gonna spit out and clutter your desktop. Uh, folder of its own, and then you're going to um, click out of your render settings, and you're gonna wanna click here, or you're not wanna, I, click, I clicked and hold, held, um, you just wanna click on the icon, I'm not gonna do it because I don't wanna render, but just click there, and it'll start to render out all your frames to the location you specified in your render settings panel, and it'll spit out hundreds of images and with those images, you're going to want to right click and import file from After Effects project bin. And you're going to want to find that file. I'm just going to go ahead and do that real quick. Go down here, Minecraft Universe, Animations, um, Finalized Animation, and here it is. You're going to want to select the first one and make sure you select PNG Sequence down here under Sequence Options, Import as Footage. Um, you can force alphabetical order if they're not already and go ahead and click import now instead of importing that one image It actually compiled them into a video of its own and you'll see that it um, It does the same thing as we did with importing the .c4d file Except for this will take actually less time to render because it's already been done in cinema 4d um, It's already been rendered out So it doesn't need to do it each time you ram preview each time you render here in after effects um, basically, when you import the C4D with the previous method, method every time you ram preview, it's actually um, using the C4D uh, Cinema 4D renderer um, as part of the ram preview, and it basically makes the ram previews take longer and the final render take longer. So, those are pretty much the pros and cons. Personally, I like to import the um, Cinema 4D file just as it is because. Um, it's actually really helpful because whenever you make changes in Cinema 4D, they will apply to After Effects um, as soon as you hit save in Cinema 4D, they, it'll actually update uh, real time. So that is super cool and um, also it's just faster and if I have to sit around and wait for render, I like lose ideas for intros and stuff like that. So um, overall, I think it's a really cool feature that they've added in Adobe After Effects CC. Um, it might be present in CS6. I, I don't know. I, I didn't really do my research. Um, let me know down in the comments below. I'm sure people watching this tutorial in the future would like to know as well. But as of now, I think it's only for CC and CC 2014 After Effects and above. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Hopefully this helped you. Uh, just a real quick tip. If it does end, out, um, end up playing too slow, I'll just ram preview here and show you what I mean. I think this animation was actually rendered really slow. I did 120 frames per second, so it should play in slow motion. Yeah, that's a lot slower than it played in the intro. So what you can actually do is right click here, go to time, enable time remapping, make a keyframe when he's done doing his stuff. Uh, ooh, my composition doesn't actually go that far. Let me actually make the composition a little bit longer. Let's go to 18 seconds, that should do it. 
Let me zoom out. Ah, perfect. And there should be a keyframe when he's done with the animation. This is basically, you're moving where he is at this point in time, and you're making it happen sooner, or you're making it happen later. So I'm going to make it happen sooner, and you'll see that it speeds everything up, and he goes nice and fast. Now, basically, with the intro I did uh, for Minecraft Universe, I just added a whole bunch of these keyframes and tweaked the speed at different times in his animation, and it came out really well. But this is basically rudimentary stuff, so here you go. Goes a little bit faster. There you go. And that's about how fast it was in the in the actual intro I made for Minecraft Universe. So that's pretty much it. Um, hopefully you guys learned something from this uh, tutorial. Um, I know a lot of you guys know how to import image sequences, but not a lot of you know how to import the actual Cinema 4D file, which is something I only found out a little bit ago and I was really um, happy and surprised by it. So hopefully this helped out you guys. And uh, with that said, make sure you share this video. If it helped you, it will probably help your friend or um, your co-worker or your dog or your grandma or your mom or your dad so um share, <laughs> share this video around with those people that you think would find it helpful and uh with that said thank you all so much for watching it would mean so much if you could leave a like on this video to share the love and um yeah thank you all so much for watching i'll see you next tuesday with another tutorial tuesday ah i've been talking fast this tutorial i'm sorry um but yeah see you guys later peace out